Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee, and just another second brood bo box ins inspection here. Jeepers. Maybe I could talk English. Yeah, another second brood box inspection. I put this brood box on 10 days ago, so and this hive is doing fairly well. So what I'm hoping to see here is that um, at the 10-day mark, they should have already laid and capped brood in this box. So that's just what we're looking to see. Hopefully, if we see that within the first, well, probably the middle few frames, the, the outside frames are usually reserved for, for nectar and honey. It's usually when you get into the middle frames that you start seeing the brood. If I see a decent amount of brood and a nice pattern, see that the queen is doing well, then that'll conclude the inspection. It won't be a long one. It's a gorgeous day, but there's been a ton of rain here, like three times the actual average rainfall in May and June in Toronto and the, and the greater Toronto area. So um, it's not a consistent rain, like it'll rain four or five times a day, lots of thunderstorms and lots of, of active weather. So they do have room to forage around it, but the weather has not been exactly ideal for these honeybees. So they might be a little slower than normal in their production, but you know, this hive's looking pretty strong. Right off the bat, I can see there's a decent amount of activity and lots of bees in that top brood box. And they've built, they're building it out quite nicely, so that's a good sign right off the bat. So it looks like they have visited these outside frames. Most of these frames were drawn out, but this outside one was not, so you can see they really haven't touched this yet. So that's not unexpected. 10 days with 10 frames and you know, it'll take them a while to get to the outside. But you're just really hoping that the uh, that they're already building brood on the inside. And the inside frames look pretty packed, so that's good. Here I'm just going to move the camera, which I don't like to do much. But I'm going to move the camera just to show you the, the vertical view of what a busy frame looks like. So have a look right here. And you can see how the outside frames there don't have much activity happening. Change the angle so that the, the, sh the shadow doesn't get in the way. Hang on. But then as you move in from the outside, you see a lot more bees on both sides of the frames. You see that? And you can actually see the comb that they're building there. That looks like honeycomb, the white stuff. And that there are bees all over it. So it's really, you can really learn a lot before you even actually open up or remove the frames of the hive. And of course, you can't really tell what's in those frames until you take them off. So I thought I'd give you the bird's eye view there just so that you'd have something different. We'll pull a couple more frames out and again I hope and expect to see brood being made on these uh, inner few frames. And again at the 10 day mark if the queen got up here right away, wow this is really heavy, holy moly. This is all just full of nectar and honey. Wow but it is heavy. It's got to be like, I don't know, 10 or 11 pounds. These empty frames are like a pound and a half, and when you pick up a 10-pound frame, you know it, I will tell you. This is all honey. And they've already built it out beyond the actual dimensions of the frame itself, so that's going to be a really good honey frame. Last year, on one of my hives, the second brood box was filled 100% with honey. And that wasn't a great situation. That, that was what you know, I determined to be honey bound. So they actually had no room to make brood. And that meant that only one brood box was full of brood and that wasn't a good scene. So I pulled out two or three frames, I think, three frames of honey and extracted the honey, which was nice in July to have honey coming. And then, uh, and then I replaced empty frames for them to have room to uh, put brood in. So. That worked out. They ended up filling it with brood. And I ended up with some early honey. 
So there are a lot of what, what is looking like they're going to be queen cells down here. So check this out. See, right now they're just queen cups or queen caps. You see along the bottom here? There's lots of them. But as you can see inside, there's nothing in them yet, right? So, you know, 10 days ago they weren't there. So the question is, why are they doing that, right? You know, it's, it's certainly a swarm cell position, but there really is no reason for these bees to want to be swarming because uh, they've got a lot of room to work with. So, I mean, it could just be that they're building comb over the end of the frame, but that kind of looks like what's going to end up being a swarm cell. There's, and again, there's nothing in them, but it still would be nice not to have them there at all. These bees are so quiet and so gentle, you can hardly even hear buzzing when you're working on them. It's the nicest, most pleasant hive to work on. Having a look for the queen, here's another frame with, uh, with brood on its way to being capped and, um, and some larvae. This side is the same. Again, it's, the center is already capped and as you work your way out from the center, you see larvae and then you see eggs. I don't actually see eggs on this one. But Certainly cat brood and larva. So the queen is around these frames. She is up here. She is making new brood and new bees. And that's what we wanted out of this hive. So it's doing really well. I might take a look at another couple of frames. just to look for the queen caps and such, but it's looking pretty good. It's a very healthy hive. This frame doesn't have much action on it. It's a frame that was not drawn out, so they're just working at drawing it out. I'll just move it over. This frame is really nicely drawn out. This is the one that when you looked at the top view, you could see the honey overflowing the sides of the, uh, of the frame. Have a look here. Look at that. So they're putting honey at the top of the frame, which is what you want, and down the sides. And then the middle, they'll lay brood there. And this is heavy. This is another 10 or 12 pound frame. Lots of pollen and honey in this one. And again, that's what they use as their food stores. Carbohydrates and sugars, I guess. And back in she goes. We'll have a look at the next frame and then that'll be it for this box. This is another one that's full of honey and pollen and, uh, and they're still building out comb on this one too very nice looking frame with a lot of bees on it right so you basically want to see that you have a lot of bees and you can see this side is just full of nectar you can see it glistening right so I'm gonna put this back and shut it up and shut up and uh, call it a successful second brood box edition we're probably optimistically two weeks away from adding honey supers and so that will probably be my next few videos. I'm going to also add a swarm box just because I, I've always wanted to build one and I really should have built one a few weeks ago, but better late than never. And that's going to be the next activity for, the, for a couple of weeks. Hopefully by early July, we'll have some honey supers coming out of these very healthy boxes. Thanks for joining me. It's Frank at 40 Honeybee.